Hello, it's Jason Payne for Cold Banker, Dan Harper Realtors. Well, today I'm with the Texas Hill Country Town of Bulverde, and I've got something very unique to show you today. This house is built by a company called Consultants of Florida, and it is a, let me get this right, steel SIPS housing, meaning uh, steel insulated panels house. Extremely high energy efficient anyway. Well, I don't need to keep talking about something I don't fully understand, but I got the owner who's also the builder of this house inside. And he's gonna give a walkthrough of the construction process of the house, the benefits of this. Now I do have to be an unrestricted land to be able to build something like this, but the sky's the limit for what you can do. And I'm really excited about this video. So yeah, let's head on inside and check it out. Well, we'll do a look, look around first because this house actually is for sale. This house is on the market. I think it's in the mid fives, but we are currently just off Bulverde Road, downtown Bulverde. Extremely quiet, peaceful out here. And there's a lot of unique features out here for this house. And we're going to come out here and kind of show you just what this is about. Uh, basically, if uh, the S hits the fan, this is the type of house you're going to want to be in. So I'm excited to show you this. And I want to promote these guys because I do get phone calls for people looking for alternative build styles and this is definitely one of them that's very impressive all right let's head on inside and talk to david he is the owner of the company that built this uh alternative style building and uh got this house for sale so i want him to show off this house and his company hey david how you doing i'm doing great jason how are you doing great good um, to see you i was telling the viewers kind of this is a unique style building uh and I was gonna let you go into the benefits of building it. And then we're going a little show off. Damn it, spam risk. Okay. Um, show off the house and the benefits of it. Well, this is what we call steel SIP construction. That's an acronym. SIPS is an acronym for steel or rather structural insulated panel system. So basically what you have this entire house, if you look up on the roof up here, what you see are steel panels. This is the actual raw steel. It's 28 gauge Galvalum steel. Galvalum is a trademark of US steel. For those of you who are in the know, these are USA made products. The whole house is virtually USA made products. What you see in the walls, or what you can't see in the walls rather, is steel studs. There is no wood in the structure per se. The entire structure is steel, and the panels up here have six inches of foam in the walls, they're four inches of foam, which means that you literally have what amounts to a walk-in cooler. Very nice. So you're going to have some incredible energy bills. My last electric bill was $89. I'm running the entire house with two one-ton mini splits. It's a zone system with a two-ton heat pump. And despite what you've heard, this makes a mockery out of most all other building jobs as far as its structural integrity. It's category five hurricane resistant. It's rated at 230 mile an hour with all the standard Miami-Dade hurricane ratings. Yeah, so you're, start, you're based out of Florida, but you're expanding to start building Correct. in Texas Correct, and, and we actually have financing anywhere in the state of Texas if you can find unrestricted land with a 680 credit score and 15% down. So the beauty about this is the bank even loves this house because it went up so fast. The entire house went up in 16 days, ready for subcontractors. Where are you gonna find a construction job that moves that fast, especially on unrestricted property? Yeah, I so that's it. one of the reasons why my ba the banks just absolutely love this, because you don't spend a whole lot of time in interest payments and everything else, yeah. waiting on construction, because we don't have a supply chain issue with the steel product. Now we move in here, what we decided to do was we decided to incorporate some higher end features into this particular home. We have right here is a propane fireplace and this is a gas fireplace with gas logs and a remote control. The remote control basically is battery operated, which means that for some strange reason the power goes out. The entire stove unit operates on battery, it's pressurized propane, so when you turn the propane furnace on, the fireplace starts up. That's what battery power does. So you don't have to worry about not having electricity for your, your fireplace to run and for you to get frozen in the winter. The other nice thing about this house is that all your pipes, your electric lines, everything is contained within the structure. There's no attic. 
So there's no pipes exposed, which means you have no frozen pipes in the wintertime. Fair. Anybody that lived here in February of 2021 knows exactly what happened in Texas and how many people had serious problems because of energy distribution by ERCOT. Won't mention names. Yeah. But the thing is, is that this house has a propane stove, a propane fireplace and a 199,000 BTU propane hot water heater, tankless. Now this house is on the market right now, isn't it? It is. It's on the market for $549.9. And As uh, of 25 May 2023. So if you're looking at this video from five years, five years from now, asking if this house is available, it's not. But I wanted to, uh, David to show it off. Yeah, well, we appreciate that. Thanks, Jason. Uh, so what we did was we decided to incorporate sconce lighting on the walls instead of invading the ceiling. So oh, this yeah, is what we say. did, you know, with sconce lighting both in the hallway and in the media room. Now the beauty about this open floor plan, you literally can take, move furniture around, and with the open kitchen, you literally can put this dining room table in the kitchen, and you can open up the living room and make it a double-sized living room, great for entertaining. The, uh, the beauty of this too is that we elected to do custom cabinets and of course we have a propane stove and it's got air fry convection oven. We chose to go with a little bit more of the upper end appliances for this thing because this house is very special. We build houses based on your lifestyle and what your future needs are going to be. We also diversified the portfolio of utilities. So this house is EMP shield equipped. Oh no, there's a lot of segment that's going to be really excited about that. This is a really neat deal because all the panels, the circuit panels on both the pole, which is where the meter is, not on the house. Because people, I don't know if you knew this about meters on houses, but some people have reactions to electromagnetic frequency mm -hmm. and unbeknownst to people, and I just had a, uh, a caller on one of my shows, well, tell me, I have a radio show oh, called The Power Hour. How can people find you? Yeah, thepowerhour.com. And so what happens is a guy called up one day and he says, how come the door's broken on this apartment I want to rent? Well, they had to get the guy out of there because he was sick. Well, when he went outside to look, there were 30 meters all parked right on the outside wall right where his bedroom was, which mm. means he was being bombarded by all that electromagnetic radiation out of those meters, and that's what made him sick. So we're glad that the meter is on the pole. These are just, you know, food for thought for the future for people that are looking for lifestyle choices and they want to be healthy because this building right here is a very non-toxic environment because of the fact it's got foam. There's no wood in the structure. It is mold and mildew resistant. There's a lot of people that are very highly allergic to mold and people get sick because of it. We don't have those kinds of issues with this kind of construction mm -hmm. because there's no wood in the structure. Uh, these are great for commercial projects as well because of the fact that tenants very difficult to abuse They're steel studs the walls are steel panels and of course, you know you as a tenant you try to put your fist through the wall You're gonna find out you're hitting steel. It, it hurts um, The higher-end stuff, you know, like I said, you can change this up if you wanted to do just a regular vent hood You could do that the one nice thing about all of this construction because we have a Mueller roof. Oh, telemarketer this time. Aha. Uh -huh. There we go. We we have a uh, we have a Mueller roof on the on the uh, on this on the roof here. This is a 50 year warranty a a panel roof. And the beauty about everything that you see here is that everything in the house is vented out the side walls, not the roof. Nothing is penetrating the roof. The roof is one solid piece. They didn't have to work around and put caps, vent caps around, pipes sticking up. Zero chance. Even, even the toilets are vented to the side wall. Everything goes out the sides, which prevents roof leaks. Mm -hmm. So we don't have that kind of a problem with steel sip construction. Yeah. Uh, the interior is reinforced with steel studs and steel beams that basically are like 14 gauge steel panels. Uh, the beam that we just showed you over the fireplace, that's 14 gauge steel that's actually been custom built and we only needed a forklift to put the entire house together. We did not need a crane. How long did it take to build this 16 house? days 16. to build the house wow. from the slab ready for subcontractors. Very cool. Yeah, I got people building luxury homes and it's going to be a year-long process so they're trying to get the hell out of the state that they're in coming to Texas 
and they're renting a place for a year waiting for the house to be built. Wow. So if you've had an unrestricted piece of lot and found that, man, you could have this thing up, depending on how big you want to go, and you can go, I'm guessing you go as tall and as big as you want to go. Well, you go, they actually, the panels can be constructed in six inch widths, which okay. is what's on the roof. Mm -hmm. If we go six inches wide with the panel, we can go 57 feet high. Ooh. So you want to build a three, you want to put a crow's nest on top, we can do that. The sky's the limit if you got the budget. See, yep. the thing is, is we, the, the website I have is shopaffordablehomes.com, and you can actually go online. We have a Matterport video on there where you can actually look at the inside of the house of the Chelsea model because we're building a lot of these in Florida because they are Category 5 hurricane resistant. These have a two-hour fire rating. In addition to that, which means the stuff in the interior of the house is more likely to burn up before the house does. So that, that's the beauty of it. And if you live in a wooded area, we also have a material that we can put on the exterior because I had a, uh, one of the agents would, that was just here looking at this place was commenting about the fact that she's from Northern California where there's a lot of fires. We actually have coatings that can go on the side of the house to prevent the house from being consumed in a forest fire. Well, I'm, I'm envisioning somewhere down the line you expanding into California. Just well, and not only that, but people who are living in high risk areas, we also have another product called Ballisticrete that we can put in the side of the house that will repel a 50 caliber round. Oh, wow. Okay. And this is about this thick when it goes on. It's like stucco, and it looks like stucco. And uh, like I said, if you're in a high risk area and you're worried about, uh, you know, penetration of, of uh, armor piercing rounds and whatnot. Navy SEALs have actually tested this ballisticrete and it actually will withstand a 50 caliber round. So we can make the house bulletproof as well. Very cool. It's entirely oh, up to you. Anything else you want to show off on this house? And uh, like I said, how it's made. Uh, we've already, prior to this video, I've seen some of the stuff and I definitely wanted you to show off a video what looks like behind the walls as well. Sure, well we can do that. Uh, we have here, if we go down, this is a, uh, a modest three bedroom, two bath home. And you can see that we have, you know, the smaller bedrooms. We're using this as an office. In the laundry room, and this is the beauty about it, we take, we take pride in actually labeling the panel so you can actually read it. Gotcha. A lot of people, they open the panel up and it looks like hieroglyphics in there. We don't have that sort of thing here. And behind the door, this oh, is the, the interesting thing here, besides the shut-off valve for the main water, this is the 199,000 BTU Navy and tankless hot water here. This is an upgrade. So most people, you envision a hot water here or a tank, 40-gallon mm -hmm. tank. Uh, it's, oh, you know, a lot of, so many people are going to tankless water heaters, and I just found out that um, getting a circulator put on a tankless water heater, it's not that expensive and it alleviates the big complaint about tankless water heaters of waiting for the water to heat up the shower and getting that circulator. You actually put a timer on it. If you typically take a shower between like 8 and 10 a.m., you can have that circulator already pre-circulating just during that two hour window. And the water comes at you fast. The water comes yeah. at you hot, already heated up and ready to roll. So we move on here from the utility room. Here we've done modest fixtures in the guest bath, as you can see. Mm -hmm. And I love that you took the tile all the way to the top. Yep. And see, this is your extra thick wafer board. You notice okay. this This it's is that. More than, slightly more texture than a, your standard orange peel. Correct. Yeah, well see, this is actually incorporated into the wall material itself. Okay. This is the heavy duty fiber board. So the moisture is not Correct. going to have any effect on this. This entire house was put together with green board. There is no regular drywall in the house. So it's very mold resistant. Very good. We, we upgraded on that as well. Uh, we have another standard house. This We can put exterior doors virtually anywhere you want them. Here's an exterior door that goes to the outside to the mm -hmm. garage. And of course we put aluminum awnings on the exterior there so you can see that. Let you take a quick gander. Yeah, and you can go. I know a lot of my folks and I talk about all the top the eight foot doors on there. Correct. These yeah. are all 36 by 80 mm -hmm. doors. 
Well, I mean, eight, I mean, eight foot tall doors. So True. I, it was like if you go, wanted to go a little bit bigger, but talking about this little house here, you got your own little mini compound here in Bolverde, Texas. True. And not only that, but I mean, if you make a mistake and you put the door in the wrong place, we literally can take the panel out, take the door out. If you say, oh, I didn't want the door there, I want it over here, we can actually switch and put the door where you want it because Steel Sip Constructions allows us to put the panel back into where the door was, affix it to the structure, cover it up and you wouldn't know the difference and it still maintains its structural integrity now you mentioned the ef emp stuff correct can we, can we take a look at what you got going there yeah we can we can do that um if you notice we've done a little bit of uh advanced thought in putting together what we consider life-saving preservation especially for those of you who rely on electricity <coughs> to operate mechanical devices like oxygen machines and things like that uh, in an EMP event, which we've studied this religiously, especially with Peter Vincent Pry's video uh, or his report, he did, an, he did a report for the uh, for President Trump and other agencies, and they determined that you'd be in a very high risk situation in the event of electromagnetic pulse. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not just, and I'm not this, I'm not going to doom and gloom this thing. It could happen because of a coronal mass ejection, like what happened in 1859 with the Carrington event. It could be a solar flare, which we've had a lot of, and if you mm -hmm. notice your cell phones being disrupted, that's because we have solar flare hitting the earth, and if one of them gets big enough, it could knock out parts of the power grid, which means that you've got a 24 kilowatt generator. Now, the beauty about this is if you look at my electric bill, the last one was $89 for the month. It said I used 23 kilowatt hours in that month. Mm -hmm. This is a 24 kilowatt generator. Nice. So you can see we're doing everything. We, we've actually met the conditions. Inside the Generac is a battery mm -hmm. that this thing turns on once a week to run a test for five minutes. The battery has an EMP shield on the battery inside on this end to protect everything inside the generator connected to the battery. And all this will convey with the house. Correct. Okay. It all conveys with the house. Now, in order to get the power from the propane generator into the house, you've got to have a transfer switch. This thing automatically says when the power goes out, oops, the panel's not running. There is an EMP shield on the transfer switch to make sure the transfer switch recognizes the panel over here, which is the main circuit panel, which also has an EMP shield on it. Oh, well, you have thought this? It, oh, yeah. It recognizes. So we've got three EMP shields so far, not including the one on the panel in the house. So there's four total, protecting everything that's plugged into the house. So if something goes wrong here and the power is missing from here, all of a sudden this tells the propane generator to turn on and the house then has power. So you're not you with, without power. In addition to that, we've also incorporated a 30 amp for an RV in case you need to bring somebody in in an emergency okay. and you want to park an RV here, we've got 30 amp service. This is connected to the septic system here, mm -hmm. which operates on aerobic, and they connect their RV okay, to that. Cool. So, so they can literally park their RV here and they've got complete access to the electricity and this is where your fiber optic internet and everything else is. Well, aren't you a good host? We try to be. <laughs> what, see, this is the thing. It's all about lifestyle choices mm -hmm. when you're looking to try to design something we take a basic floor plan, which we did here. This is a shed roof, barn dominium style property, and we put two porches on it. The thing is, is it's one solid 30 by 70 piece. It's aiming to the south. If we wanted to put solar on the roof, we could do that. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't impregnate the roof because we already know that the roof has metal. It's got steel underneath the metal, the Mueller roof, which is Texas made in Bollinger. And then on top of that, once you mount those panels to there, if you don't want to impregnate the roof or penetrate the roof, you can put the shield, the solar panels on the ground. Nice. So now I want to move on to the shed. This is the well house, which basically you can see how the structure is. We're going to show you what the inside of the steel sip house looks like. Turn on some light here. This is the well house. Now this is a 440 foot deep well with an 83 gallon transfer pump. This is a storage tank, it's pressurized. And so what happens is the water is fed from the pressure tank through the main faucet up the wall. This is a UVB sterilizer. This sterilizes the water and takes out all the bacteria from the well water because we know that a lot of well water is polluted. And so we don't want to take that chance of contaminating everybody. 
Once you're done with getting rid of the bacteria, it goes down into a five filter water purification unit, which is also pressurized. You can see the meter on there that's showing you that it's pressurized. And then from there, it goes into the water softening unit, which is drained to the outside and it's fed through the house. This is the only exposed pipe that there is and it's got insulation on it. Now, what do you think happens when I plug that heat lamp in here down to this bottom switch? If it gets below freezing, I plug in a, a little simple 125 watt heat lamp. This entire structure, which you can see how the channels lock on to the tongue and groove steel panels. You see how that works? This is exactly the same structure as the house. So what happens is, is when you plug that heat lamp in, that little heat lamp, this whole thing becomes 80 degrees in the interior. It affects what's going through this pipe right here. Cool. Because of the fact that everything is run underground and because there is no attic, all the pipes, the plumbing, everything is contained on the inside of the structure because there's no attic, which means you don't have the problems you had February of 2021 with pipes bursting in the house. Very cool. This know. is a triple filtration system because we've got an RO under the sink and an XWFE water filter on the refrigerator. So every bit of water that you take showers with is double filtered and softened when it goes into the house. So we've, we've taken, you know, the health concerns into in consideration when we pick the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So the uh, the one nice thing about this, we really... Well, this is on about a half an acre. This is it? on 0.57 acres. Okay, just over half an acre. Yeah, it is completely fenced up. You'll notice it's got two by four non-climb fence. And there's a reason for that strategically. We won't get into military jargon, yeah, but he, he, he's prior military just like I am. Yeah, so we so, so you that. understand that you got to take your socks and shoes off in order to climb a two by four non climb fence. Yeah, understand that there's two strands of barbed wire on there. Now we have a lot of deer here, mm -hmm. and the deer used to come in the yard and eat my wife's plants, and we didn't like that. So we incorporated two strands of barbed wire all the way around the house. So therefore, the deer will not challenge it. I've actually mm. seen deer try to get in and get out, and they can't because of the way this is structured. Over here, what's really interesting, uh, most people don't like unsightly propane tanks, and we took that into consideration. So what we did was, if you want to look inside here, we actually have a regulator with low price gas in here, and it tells me, if you want to get over the top of it there, Jason, and look inside, there's the regulator. This is a thousand gallon propane tank buried in the ground, and it's connected to the inside here, vis-a-vis, -vis, and you'll notice that is the vent for the fireplace. fireplace. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, this is the regulator that goes to the fireplace, and everything is connected down here through a panel. And so, basically, they will back their tank up here and fill the tank up, close the lid, and, you know, we've started a cactus garden in here. So, landscaping, you can xeriscape these things if you want to. But we didn't want that 1,000-gallon tank. It's a big red, looks like a giant, oh, yeah. you know, jelly Burying bean. them is the way to go. Yeah, and we, we didn't, and surprisingly, this is the thing that most people don't understand. It, it's only, I don't see, we're, we're talking dollars and cents now. It's only another 800 bucks to get one in the ground. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to pay for the cost of digging the hole. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I had the guy that put the foundation in, because he's already got his backhoe out here, I had him dig the hole for that, include that in the price. There you so go. there are all these things you can negotiate in the process. So once you get the tank in the ground, see, people can't shoot at it. Yep. That's another nice thing, because in civil unrest, you want to be prepared for something like that. I mean, I'm sorry, this is my military talking. <laughs> uh, but that's one of the reasons we put it in there, because obviously, if it's there, it all of a sudden becomes a target. And mm -hmm. we don't want targets. We want to no. eliminate that. Over here, we have an aerobic system. Yep. And now, for those who know anything yeah. about aerobic systems, these basically do all the work for yep. you. There's a sprayer head over here. I tell people all the time, if they're coming from out of state, and it's like, don't freak out if it's got a septic. They are very, very low maintenance. They are, really. And uh, they're very effective. They Things have gone a long ways over the years. I only have to put one gallon of bleach in here every month. Mm -hmm. That's it. And it screws back down. And I have a three-year service contract on this if anything goes wrong. So far, nothing's gone wrong. Been here a year. This is connected to its own device. Notice we have rain barrel collection yep. here, 250-gallon rain one barrels. Rain There's barrels one on the other house. end down there. But yeah, this, this basically is called a ProFlow aerobic system, and this does all the work. Once a day, the heads will pop up. There's one there, there's one down here, and one over there. Yeah. They're all around the edge of the yard, and they pop up, and for 20 minutes, they spray gray water and pop back down. 
Not drinkable water. No. But it's also not toxic water. Correct. And so you can see we're trying to grow some grass out yes. here. Yes. And you, when you're looking at properties, you usually find the green spot and like, oh, there's where the spray off's at. Yep. So you got that right. So anyway, we got a uh, 10 by 25 porch here, back porch, where you can sit there and look at the Bulverde Hills. Like and of course, so off your view. I know it. Nothing, nothing is complete. Uh, this is this is what's really neat is this little two ton heat pump right here. This is what is running the entire house. This is taking the cold air return, pushing the heat out of the house, which is why at 77 degrees it feels like a walk-in cooler in the uh -huh. house. So just this little two-ton heat pump basically is running two one-ton mini-split air conditioners that cool the entire house. And this is why our electric bills are so cheap. There you go. And it's very quiet. Uh, one of the other things we took into consideration is people who like to do hobby farming because they think it's extremely important to uh, grow vegetables. Well, uh, one thing that we're including here is the greenhouse. And as you notice, we uh, seem to be doing fairly well with a bumper crop out here. There you go. I told uh, people, told you guys, this can be a unique video. I mean, what what house has all of this that comes with it? Exactly. We yeah, haven't even got to the chicken coop yet. <laughs> exactly. What's the price again? Five forty nine nine. Five forty nine. So five fifty. I, I people will do the forty nine, but yeah. it's five fifty. <laughs> yeah, five forty nine nine. I think that's it a JC Penny thing talking. Yeah. You know. uh, anyway, but see, you can see down here that everything is fenced all the way to the bottom. The property slopes from the northwest or northeast to the southwest, but you can see the Bulverde Hills in the background. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of privacy here, a lot of screen. Yep. in the backyard see a lot of bamboo exactly for your privacy there and and we also all of this has square gutter this is different from most you can see all the vents on the side of the house you see the kitchen vent over the stove that's on the porch there there's a little vent there like i said you can look up on the roof and you don't see anything sticking out of the roof and of course everything all the gutters come out the back and empty into the rain barrel so that you've got rain barrel access you can water your veggies with rain water if you like but we're in a transplant mode right now because we're growing everything in the raised bed you can see right here that we've got the spinach and the peas and the lettuce all starting to come up. This has only been in here about four days. If someone buys this house, all this, all this, all this stays so you, with you've it. You've got your veggies already good yep, to go. We've got carrots, we've got cucumbers, we've got radishes, we've got beets, we've got turnip, we got beans, we got squash, we got eggplant. Yep. You really need eggplant. Yep. <laughs> and so, and then here's more tomato plants. And then these are all jalapeno peppers. Mm. If you like jalapenos, got a lot of them, yeah, and then of course we got poppers. your regular. Yeah, we got your regular beans. green peppers here. My wife's, she she loves these little chocolate poblanos. These are mm. something else. Nice, hot. Don't no. eat the seeds. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't. My uh, acid reflux says no more sp super spicy stuff. I understand. Anyway, so we put the corn out here because for obvious reasons, corn doesn't do real well inside a greenhouse. And of course, I've had to transplant some of the tomato plants too, but you see how big they've gotten? Mm -hmm. And this is only after a month. Nice. So there's a technique to doing that kind of gardening, raised bed gardening. So. Uh, there's all sorts of possibilities here too. The one thing I didn't discuss is the possibility, and you notice I've started putting some rock down here, and it, we filled in with some dirt from the septic tank, and we, we tried to level the lot out here. There would be nothing stopping you because this is unrestricted property, which is one of the reasons for septic island. permit and a driveway permit, and that was it. Mm -hmm. I, didn't have, I didn't have any building permits when I put this up. Everything is done to code because we use licensed electricians, licensed plumbers. Everybody did everything the way they were supposed to. And so, you know, having built several of these in Florida, we pretty much knew what we were doing. But you could actually put a pond down there oh, if you wanted cool. to. Because, see, the way the water slopes, you've got a natural rain collection system waiting to happen. So if you wanted to put a pond in, you can. Now, here's the other nice thing for those of you who hate paying big money for eggs. We've got a chicken coop. Yes, here's the ladies. And you see what I mean? Well, you got an egg. Not one, but just there two. Go. See, we haven't had to buy eggs for months. We only have five hens. This hen house will seat six hens. Let me get a video of these beautiful ladies out. Oh here. yeah, they're doing really good. <laughs> <laughs> they're not shy. But the beauty is, is they're, they're not real high maintenance for those of you who are freaking out about this. They actually have rent a hen, rent a chick out. 
And, and people, okay, I don't know. do not look that up online, folks. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm serious. It's, it's a little expensive. You can do your own thing. I built this chicken coop myself, all right? Mm -hmm. And uh, some of it I actually use the steel sip panels. So we'll actually, aside from the barn, which is, you know, basically storage in this instance, and we're up close and personal to the fence here so you can see how much security we have. Like people really, like the bamboo adds so much privacy to it. It does. Fence. This is what the panel looks go. like. This is 28 gauge okay. galvalume steel. And you notice here that it's got a little slot in here with some excess room. This is part of the tongue and groove system that the entire panel puts together. And you'll notice in here, this is exactly four inches of EPS foam, expanded polystyrene foam. Termites hate it. It's not their diet. They don't eat this stuff, which means if you've got concrete steel and this stuff going on, you don't have termites. Understand that. Yeah. You know, we, there's no wood in the structure. This is all steel studs, and you don't have to worry about termite contracts. We don't have a termite inspector here. How so would this is. do the wires and stuff that would come in it? Yeah, normally, see what we do. Let me go grab a hat channel real yeah. quick. I'm going to come over here to our separate supplies. We actually keep some of the supplies here in case you ever have to make a change or make some additions. But I want to show you. This is what we call a hat channel. Upside, okay. Obviously, it looks kind of like a hat. There you go. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to come back over here. This is a much larger panel. We're going to set this hat channel right here in the panel. And we put another hat channel 16 inches down from that, another channel 16 inches down from that. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my electric lines, and I'm going to just staple the electric line, just the regular Romex. Mm -hmm. I'm going to staple it to the inside of this. I'm going to run my plumbing next to that. I'm going to use clamps, and I'm going to clamp the PVC plumbing. We use PEX in this house, by the way, all the yep. way through. Most new construction builders use PEX nowadays. Yeah, well, we have all PEX plumbing in here. And so, you know, there's some PVC on the inside where the water shut-up valve is. That's all the PVC there is. Mm -hmm. Once we get to that water heater, it's all PEX from there. So understand that what we have here, you put your drywall on here. And what this does, we already have R50 in the panel. Mm -hmm. And when I add the drywall to this, I'm actually insulating the electric and the plumbing inside the wall. Your, your outside cold air is out here, so when it gets below freezing, this insulation stops the cold air from getting into the panel. I've got another R10 inside the panel because I'm adding hat channel and drywall to it, and so virtually no frozen pipes. There you go. And you can run your ethernet cables and all that stuff. Correct. You can, you can run everything before you do it. it. But you can still um, fish them through if you wanted to upgrade your cables and stuff later on. As long as you know where that hat channel is at. Right, and see, here's the beauty. Channel. Run stuff through the ceiling. Now, what we do in the ceiling is, and, and we talked about this before, but the mini split air conditioners are actually up in the crawl space. We don't have attics in these types of homes. They're crawl spaces. And so basically everything is insulated inside the box. The entire walk-in cooler encompasses all the pipes, the electric, the cables, the ethernet. You can run them down the walls because we take pictures of all of the walls with the hat channel on them. We already know where we're going to run the tracks. If you already want to wire, let's say you want to do a smart home, we actually will design the home so that you can run all the wires ahead of time, you know, where everything is going to run, where they're going to put the modem, where they're going to put the container the for the whole thing. Ports on the wall. Exactly. You, all that can be designed into the floor plan, nice. which is the beauty of it if you want a smart home, if you're that glued to it. All oh, right? I love a smart home. I'm yep. a technology uh, nerd. Everybody loves it. But see, this is all that was left over other than what I built the compost box with. This is all the material that was left over from constructing the house. All these people, when you go to see a regular stick and brick built house and you look in the dumpster and you see how much material waste there is, mm -hmm. you can do That's all it. sorts of... I built a compost box with this. Good I built a chicken planning, coop with this. I'm, I built the, the panels. You, you see go. the raised bed gardens on are, are the window panels. Very cool. Because there's 10 windows cut out of the house. So the windows, by the way, are double-filled argon gas windows. Well, so they're energy tired. efficient as well. We, we tried to take you know everything into consideration as far as money saving. And of course, you know, with the barn, barns are barns. Uh, you know, we put electricity in this barn. We got a barn here with plenty of storage. Uh, this actually has a motion sensor on the outside. 
On the inside we have extra storage in here for those who have a lot of stuff. We keep a lot of our, you know, excess materials, garden equipment and supplies and whatnot in here in case we need to, you know, call on them. But anyway, this kind of shows you uh, what little supplies and things that we had to purchase to get the house built. Because, I mean, literally, we're talking about electric shears. We're talking about low-cost mm -hmm. outfitting a steel crew to come in and do this. And that's why contractors love building with these things because oh, they're so I quick. I can see it. Like, and like I said, I've had people reach out to me before looking to build with alternative materials before. And it's like, I'm just not that educated on it. So I'm glad I met you today. To you bet. Well, I appreciate educated. you coming out because this is an education. And every house I build, I learn something new. Yeah. And so uh, actually the steel crew was trained by my contractors in Orlando, Florida, who I flew out at my own nickel and got them to train in. They were paid while they were doing it. It was on the job training. They were getting paid. We had to rent a forklift. That was the extent of it. No heavy cranes. I mean, it was totally cool because people walk in and they go, wow, must have taken a big crane. No, no, we just use a regular JLG 6,600 pound forklift and we pour forklifted all 328 pound panels up on the roof and uh, that's what's up on there. Your roof cleaning is just amazing. Go up there with a leaf blower and just blow the leaves and the stems and stalks off the roof. You don't have to worry about putting a ladder up against the gutters and falling off a ladder. You just have to get up on the roof one time and you can walk around that roof. You can drive an F-150 on those panels and they won't bend. These things literally uh, will withstand a Category 5 hurricane, so you walking around up there isn't going to disturb the roof at all. Good deal. So I like that. That's a good thing. So we're, we're talking about an easy lifestyle choice to make, and that's one of the reasons why we went with the shed roof on this particular model, which is a one-third by 12 pitch. But if this isn't your style for you, they can easily reach out to you. Do a gable you, roof if you want to do that. Do a gable, gable roof. You can do... Uh, Real popular is the uh, farmhouse, modern farmhouse. Right, the gambrel roof. Mm -hmm. Yep, and we can do those. Real creative. So if you see this and like this isn't quite your style, reach out to David. I'm going to have his contact information in the description box and uh, have a conversation with him. As you can tell, he is a wealth of information. He is the owner of this company, the company at DK, DK Consultants. Consultants of Florida, LLC. Yeah, and uh, if you long as you got some unrestricted land and an imagination and uh, reach out to David, he can build you something amazing. Or if you don't want to wait for that, come by this house. It's only 550K. I love the location of this. You've got such easy access. 281 is just like two miles down the road through Spring Branch. And since they have uh, finished the upgrade of 281, beginning from here to San Antonio is extremely easy. And you also got really easy access to both Blanco, not Blanco, Blanco's going north up 281, but you also got easy access to Bolverde and New Braunfels, about a 25 minute drive from here as well. So it feels like we're way out in the country, but we're really not. No, it's very close. All the major shopping is like five minutes away. How long have you lived out here? Uh, been here since May 28th the last year, and since then, we've only consumed 140 gallons of propane. Nice. Now think about that. We diversified the utilities, and we protected the electric grid. So if anything goes wrong, you're still safe. Very cool. Now, I know I haven't shown off the master bedroom, and I'd get comments if I don't show that off. Oh, yeah. They want to see that master that. bedroom. Let's go this way. We can do that. You guys know I want to save two master bedrooms to last, and if you've been waiting this long, I really do appreciate you watching this video. This is a lot of information, but it's a unique product, and it's not too often I have the opportunity to have the builder and CEO of a company showing off this type of unique build process of a house that's actually on the market as of late May 2023. Now, this is the primary bedroom. <laughs> the primary bedroom. Uh, we woke already. No, Come I, on, I, folks. I call them the master bedroom. Yeah, no, the primary bedroom, and we extra have. We have uh, in additional. We we built in extra closet storage. So you've got you know extra place to store all your stuff that you're not using at the present time. You can put it in containers and cases, however you want to work that. Uh, but the thing is, you know, we were looking at lifestyle choices when we designed it, and of course you get a great shot of the Bulverde Hills from mm -hmm. the uh, bedroom window. And of course you have, you know, the greenhouse is basically, you get to look at that and make sure all your plants and your greenery are okay and nice. the critters aren't eating it. We've also incorporated, instead of molesting the ceiling, we did the uh, sconce lighting. In here we tried to, we've got your own throne room, 
Yep. With lots of space. Lots, lots of space in the throne room. Some water closets I look at. Sorry, I lived in Europe. I call them water closets. Um, a lot of elbow room. So when you're in there doing your business, you're Well, and see, not only that, but we have a two-stage low-flush toilet system to save on water. But we are in well water. And uh, we, of course, went with the uh, medium-grade appliances. Mm -hmm. And this particular one, if you'll notice here, this is a 15-amp dedicated outlet. So for those of you, the way this was designed, this basically right here in this space, if we were to take this set of shelves out of here, you can incorporate a two-person sauna in oh. this space right here. It was designed for that. Very cool. So we have the exact dimensions of that, and you can put a two-person sauna in. Now, here's the unique thing. I love this. This is called a European-designed wet floor. Now, why is that? Well, the this is a steel resin tub. This that is not acrylic. This is steel tub. resin. And it's very, very heavy duty. And it deep. has its own drain. And it, if you, it, there's no way that it's going to overflow because there's an overflow drain at the top. That will just come right out and go down. If we have an, another drain here. So if you want to take a shower first and wash your hair and get cleaned up, then you can get in the tub and soak. So this is a European design with a 130 CFM fan. Again, it's vented out the side. Nothing penetrates the roof. So you don't have to worry about leaks. This is one thing I like about this construction. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but if you wanted this bathroom bigger, we could have made it bigger. There you go. So I mean, could have made the kitchen smaller. This is the beauty about it. Even well, if you, you even if you, you walk in, with well, with steel construction, I mean, literally, you can take. It's not like wood where you're going to damage the wood. You can literally take the stud down, move the wall two feet that direction, and put it back up again. Oh, there you, you go. can make all these decisions based on your eyeball, based on the measurements. If you get in, this is the beauty about steel sip construction. Your exterior walls are the load bearing walls. Mm. Okay. Everything else running down the middle is basically nothing but support beam. That's it. It just holds the entire structure together, which is why it is Category 5 hurricane resistant. Cool, cool. So that kind of gives you an indication of where we are. So that, that's basically the, uh, the tour. All right. And of course, we have zoned heating and air conditioning. Let me turn the switch on. I think somebody turned me off here down the hall. <laughs> Yeah, we elected. Uh, 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 we, we elected. Yeah, we elected to put this on a dimmer so that you can actually see down the hallway. But uh, this is basically 30-foot hallway. This gives you an idea of what we did here with this particular project: 1,904 square feet. There you go. Well, David, I really appreciate your time today. I uh, hope my viewers got a lot of great information. If they did, if they wanted to buy this house. Reach out to this guy over here. This is Mr. Wade Phillips. He's actually one of my mentors when I first became a realtor. And uh, when his hope holding this open house today, I definitely made sure I come up there. Say hi, Mr. Wade Phillips. Hello, everybody. All right, he is the listing agent for this house. And there's Ted. He's also another realtor with Cole Banker. Everybody loves Ted. But uh, yeah, reach out to Wade Phillips. I'm gonna leave his contact information in the description box as well if you want something unique like what this house is. And don't forget, this is porcelain tile floor throughout. There you go. Right, wow, that was such a unique tour. I'm really appreciative of Dave for opening this out and giving us so much information. I'm sure somewhere out there on the internet, someone is looking for a builder that builds houses like this. And feel free to reach out to me or David or Mr. Wade if you wanted to buy this house here. But uh, if you like this video, I know it was long, then hit that like button. And of course, I want you to subscribe to my channel. And as always, share these videos with your friends and family. I really do appreciate it and have a wonderful day. All right, take care now. Bye.